In this video, we are going to be answering a dashboarding slash visualization question. The question is, tell me a little bit about a time where you build a dashboard project. Yeah, for sure. So at Shopify, I think one of the challenges we had was we are a very big organization. And within this organization, we had about 10 to 13 different product areas. Within each of these product areas, the challenge is that every team had about 10 to 15 uh, metrics or KPIs that they would want to surface to our leadership team. When you do the math, that's a lot of metrics on how things actually can get distilled and diagnosed. And our leadership team was having issues trying to understand the health of the business as well, too. So I was tasked with building what we had called our core strategic metrics, which is trying to understand of these product areas, what were the things that mattered the most? What were our North Star goals and KPIs as well? So I think before we even started to think about dashboarding or writing the SQL queries, we really needed to talk to each of the teams to understand what were those goals? What were the things that we actually wanted to surface to our product area leaders to kind of dictate this is successful, These how are things on track? What are the targets we actually need to get to as well too? I think with the different areas and the different teams, it wasn't a, uh, a cookie cutter type of vibe. So we wanted to make sure that we were accommodating to each team. Some teams are very mature in the sense that they are very well established with what they were tracking. They had targets set up and there was minimal involvement on my end. There were teams where we actually had to build the data pipeline because we'd love to measure these things, but it's one of those things where they didn't exist to date too. So a lot more requirements gathering, a lot more understanding this is what the metric should look like and how can we actually figure out a long-term solution versus just building this every quarter on top of that as well too. So I think that took a few weeks to kind of uh, get under control, but once we actually build that planning stage and that actually got uh, a good foundation of this is what our metric should look like, uh, I had presented the view to our leadership team. I had gotten an alignment on here, the metrics that we actually wanted to track to. So before any coding got done or before any analytical work, we actually got that alignment too, which was a really, really big milestone for us as well. Once that proceeded, I, I went to work on either re reproducing some of the metrics that the teams had given me via SQL, uh, building up brand new metrics completely and writing these uh, from scratch, and then ensuring that we were getting the results that we wanted to do, ensuring that the numbers were easy to understand and interpretable. Uh, our data product leaders, our data science leads as well, would actually be aligned on this is actually how it was interpreted. And then getting that sign off before I actually start building the dashboarding too. So once the dashboarding came, I kind of split it up into two parts. A view that is meant for executives, that is a centralized view on here is the progression, this is the source to target, and then this is how we're actually trending with like a couple of bullets on insights as well too ensuring that all of their dashboards are linked out to more technical detailed dashboards should we want to diagnose how things go wrong. So a good example that I gave what I could give is if our sales had dropped quarter over quarter, the dashboard would actually indicate that we actually had fallen and we are now below target. The why aspect can give that a lot of few examples around this is what drove it, drove it holiday seasonality, things went wrong, there was an outage on our product side as well too. But then this other dashboard that we would actually coordinate with the team specifically that I wasn't managing would go into more details on the segmentation. These are the types of merchants that are driving those issues. These are the locale or the locations that we want to get into. I think for me, I really wanted to focus on from an executive view, if I only have five seconds to look at these specific metrics, this is why it's happening, this is why it's driving it, what are we going to do about it? If they want to go deeper, we actually have the product teams available because they have a lot more detailed expertise than me. And I didn't want to, one, duplicate work, step on each other's toes, but ensure that we are actually moving forward and making really, really fast strategic decisions whenever we can as possible as well, too. So I think just to recap, we got that alignment. Once we started thinking about what the metrics we want to surface, building this into a centralized dashboard and a technical diagnostic dashboard, and then being able to communicate these in rituals or mediums such as quarterly business reviews, town halls, something that people can really look at when they want to understand how our business is performing without the nuance of where to look, how to find it, clicking through various dashboards on top of that too, and then being able to manage that on a quarterly basis. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Alan, for guiding me through the process. I think there are a lot of uh, dashboarding as well as uh, decision you have to make to ensure 
that we're building something that the team will be eventually use. One follow-up question for you is, not sure if you encountered in your previous role, but one of the main pain point was sometimes the definition for those metrics are not too clear. And each team may have its own interpretation or even belief of what the metrics should be defining. So can you just guide me through, like, have you encountered that situation in your process? And how did you, uh, what process or what step did you take to ensure that everyone is clear on the definition of what we are measuring? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I feel like if I never got pushed back in my career, I'd be lying to you in terms of just getting this alignment. But I think this is where that planning for uh, portion really comes into, like, it's very critical to kind of ensure that we actually achieve this milestone before any work gets done. Uh, what we would want to do is ensure one, we're not wasting anyone's time and then getting into problems where we are aligning after the metrics are built. So ensuring that the teams not only get that visibility with our senior leadership team, so not just me being that broken telephone and that kind of communication between those two groups, but ensuring that we are actually setting up some time to one, get something on paper in terms of this is what the metric means. This is the expectations of leadership. And this is also more importantly, what can we feasibly, uh, feasibly measure on top of that as well too. It's one thing for leadership to say, I really need this. But sometimes we would need an expert opinion, AKA our product area team to tell us, this is the reality of the situation. This is the data that we are currently ingesting. And this is what we can actually interpret. So we run into things such as trade-offs with accuracy, uh, trying to build metrics where there is a little bit of a gray area on top of that too, but then getting that alignment on that planning stage that we are okay with some vagueness in the metric on top of that. I think that's just the planning stage. I think the, as a follow-up answer to your question, in the centralized dashboard, we will have those definitions front and center. There is a section that we had, had for like a data dictionary, a glossary that people can refer to as well too. And then things such as quarterly business reviews, when we kicked this off for the first time, I remember our very first quarterly business review, we spent 20 minutes just going over, hey, these are the metrics and definitions as well. Not the most fun meeting, to be honest with you, but I think it was very critical that we set the, the tone for how we want to approach these metrics moving forward. Absolutely. I can definitely resonate <laughs> of what you just shared. And also just um, we talk about the different stage of dashboard building a lot. And I really like how you said like the planning stage is critically important. And one thing I do want to follow up is after the dashboard is built, how do you usually do like the QA side of things to ensure all the numbers are correct? Not for just one time, but consistently and continuously monitoring. Yeah, I mean, we do have specific guardrails in our metrics just to show like, does the week over the week or the core of the quarter skew from like 5% that we typically see that up and down to 150% on top of that. I think that also comes with a mindset of, yes, the data looks good, but is it really good, essentially? So back to this idea of tracking sales quarter over quarter. If we had jumped 140% year over year, really, really big win, posting in our Slack channels that, hey, this metric is like going off the charts, up and to the right, we should all celebrate as a team. But a part of us should always have a, almost like a humble reminder that we should always question the data, whether it's good or bad on top of that. Is this really what we are getting? Just so we can be very clear because it's, it's great to communicate wins. It's also very important to communicate losses, but I think the accuracy, one, provides credibility to the team as well. A dashboard is only as good as, as, as long as it's accurate. And then two, just ensuring that we're building trust within the team to say, hey, we know what we're looking at. We've vetted this a couple of times as well. And then just making sure that we are just constantly on the hunt for edge cases or outliers or things that could drive the data. There are things that are out of our control, such as product launches or changes or engineering outages that we just need to be ready for. And we can't just assume that just because the query looks good and the code is fine and the data we're getting, it can't. it's never going to always be 100% correct. Thanks for watching. Next, let's do a quick reflection and review of what the candidate just shared. So this question is about, tell me about a time where you build a dashboard project. Usually interviewer wanted to assess your ability definitely to build a dashboard from end to end, but also to understand your decision making process. For example, what things you wanted to prioritize versus not prioritize, 
what visualization you are building for what audiences. So those are the things that interviewer really wanted to know from this particular example. In this case, Alan did a great job of walking us through, first of all, the general thought process that he will have when building a dashboard. He also utilized the star format where he shared the situation, also the action he took, as well as the final results. I think that's a great way of really showcasing his ability to build a dashboard, but also coupled with business acumen as well as communication skills. Something I think everyone could consider when building on your particular example in their interview process is you may want to consider how to not only build the dashboard, but also showcasing your ability to consider optimization and efficiency, which is part of our rubric for answering technical question. In the case of building a dashboard, what efficiency means not only is how fast you can build the dashboard itself, but aligning all the metrics up front, but also how you could be scaling your dashboard as well as doing QA and error detection after you publish the dashboard. In this case, you might want to share that you may build automated alert to track whether or not there are data errors or things that are a little bit edgy cases that you wanted to highlight not only to yourself, but maybe to the development team or the leadership teams as a business insight. If you are enjoying this video, please visit tryexponent.com to view our data analytics interview prep course, where you have access to all the other interview questions, expert coaching, peer-to-peer -peer mock interview, where you can practice yourself. Good luck on your next interview.